that's what's more fun for me. I spent most of my life as an Confident yet self deprecating in nature, the wide eyed girl next door, Amanda Seyfried has conquered Hollywood with a string of great characters in notable films. Young and bright with a contagious aura, Amanda was lucky enough to have quite a model upbringing. By the sprightly age of 11, Amanda was already busy partaking in acting classes, singing lessons and modelling. This triple threat quickly appeared on teen book covers and had reoccurring appearances in Soapies, As the World Turns and All My Children. But Seyfried first entered cultural consciousness at age 18 in Mean Girls, playing Karen, the most hilariously ditzy member of the so-called Plastics. Her portrayal of the lovable airhead could have seen Amanda take on more light-hearted roles in teen comedies, but ambitiously she went after intricate character-driven projects such as Nine Lives and Mamma Mia. Amanda acted as Meryl Streep's daughter in the musical hit that earned $600 million at the box office and propelled her into the big time. But with a wicked sense of humour, Amanda couldn't stray too far from the teen flicks, starring in the black comedy Jennifer's Body. With a lot of horror-filled moments in this film, how did Amanda pretend to be scared by Megan Fox's demonic cheerleader character? Um, if you can trick your body into thinking that you're scared, it's fine. I mean, Megan, Megan with the blood dripping down wasn't so scary, but at one point she was like doing some weird stuff like laughing hysterically and that actually scared me but then again you know it's not real so you have to it's just it's more of a physical thing for me but I didn't stay in the moment I can't stay in the moment she's like standing there with like her outfits like you could hear it like every time she moved because it was all like crusted hard blood it's funny that crusty blood proved to be too hilarious because the same year Amanda took on her most challenging film to date Chloe Seyfried played a manipulative temptress in this psychological thriller opposite Liam Neeson and Julianne Moore, with whom she shares a number of sex scenes. There are a lot of uncomfortable moments in, 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 during the filming of this, so yeah. It, but you know, that's how you, that's, that's what you learn, that's how you learn about yourself and about your character and about, and, and experience things. So I feel actually like I climbed a mountain with this one. I really do. And uh, I feel like I've, it turned out so beautifully. Oh God, I mean, yeah. Critics raved about Amanda's performance as the dubious and unpredictable Chloe, and the role rightfully earned her the respect and reputation of an impressive dramatic actress. I've I've been doing this for over six years now, doing 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 the the, the pictures, and uh, and I've never been been given a review in, in that way. And I realize that this is the type of movie, if I do well, I, I can get, I can get respected, respect for. And I am, and I can't believe it. It's such a good feeling. You can't take it too seriously, because then people are gonna, you know, people can also say, wow, what a shit actor. And that day um, may come. But right now, I'm, I'm getting praise for it, and uh, yay. And fluffy romantic films were next, such as Dear John. This film follows the relationship between a soldier and his pen pal sweetheart after his deployment to war. Slammed by the critics, the movie was still strong enough at the box office to knock off Avatar from the top spot. Overtaking Pandora was good, but having Channing Tatum as your John was better. It's fantastic, you know, she, she really, really brought something kind of interesting to the role, which is kind of a, a humor, like a, an irony to it, and, and you know, it was, it was really nice. She's a very subtle actress in general, so it's, uh, it's, it's really refreshing. Continuing the love fest, Amanda then featured in the rom-com Letters to Juliet. Based around a young woman who discovers a letter written to Juliet Capulet, Amanda and her co-stars Vanessa Redgrave and Chris Egan travel through Italy looking for long lost love, only to discover new love is right under their noses. Cooped up in a car during most of the film's production, how did the trio get along? The three of us had a really good time. Um, she's very protective of her, of her actors and I think she just we just respected each other so much that it was easy and, and she's really playful and Chris is really funny and playful and so is Gary. <laughs> And we would be in the car, and, and Chris would have a mix CD that he would bring in, and he would, like it'd be a, a mix of of some opera music and then some classical music from from the soundtrack of a movie from years ago, and then he'd have this 
big pop song playing really loud, and we, Chris and I, would be singing along, and Vanessa would be singing along. It was just it was so, it was so perfect. It's like it's like we're all one generation, but we're not. And I think that's so wonderful that we could we could both we could all come into on to one to one page and, and be and be equals. But enough of the pleasantries. <laughs> Amanda needed to get a bit darker in her film choices. She took the starring role in the Gen Y rejuvenation of the fairy tale Red Riding Hood. Director of Twilight, Catherine Hardwick, sat in the chair for this film and found that Amanda was the perfect choice to fill the Red Hood in this gothic interpretation. Yeah, she's really like an original. <laughs> she's unique. She, you don't know what's going to come out of her mouth, and and she draws you in in a way. I think you know she's got the eyes, she's got the soul that you you just want to go along the on the ride with her. You know, and this was a a wild fun ride for this care fun and scary ride and. I just thought, you know, she's very, she's got an open heart, she's brave, she'll do anything, she's sexy and funny, you know, you just kind of want to be with her. Amanda does appear to be all those good things, however, it's the unpredictable and brash thing she says that can shock those around her. I don't know, I just, um, some of the things I say are just ridiculous and a bit dirty. Um, just jokes though. I don't know. I, I, I think I admit I think I asked Max something really um personal about his nether regions right before we shot our first scene together. I was just loosening him up really. I'm sure he was relaxed after that comment. And it's that kind of unique humor that can catch people off guard with Amanda. While on the red carpet for In Time a futuristic film that explores the concept of stopping the ageing process at 25, Amanda dropped a little bit too much information when discussing what age she would like to pause at. Probably 25. I mean, yeah, because I get it. Like, I get why they chose 25. I mean, your frontal lobe stops developing at 25 in your brain, and um, apparently it all goes downhill from here. I can feel it in my boobs. They're sagging a little. But Amanda is still young and has plenty of years before gravity becomes the enemy, which is why choosing to star in the physically demanding thriller Gone was the perfect choice. But dodging the police to track down a killer trying to murder her character's sister proved to be a real challenge for Seyfried. It was exhausting, but it made sense. I mean, the stakes are so high, the time is so limited. She has to, she has to move on through and nothing's gonna stop her, so I, like, I, I just, kept reminding myself that it's like high stakes, but sometimes it'd be like three in the morning, really dark and wet, and I'd be so tired, and they'd be like, okay, we're ready for you, and I'm like, <laughs> okay. You know what I mean? It's just like jumping into a whole nother frame of mind. It's so exhausting. So if it was that tiring, why would Amanda tackle such a fast-paced murder mystery? It's my favorite genre. I like, I really like psychological thrillers because they always stick with me. Um, I love how they manipulate the audience, and uh, it's it's like a fun ride. And I don't know, it was a really good script. It just it, it was attractive, and you know, obviously my face is in every frame, which is not attractive about it. But I love working, and we had awesome producers and director and actors all around. It was so cool. With her wholesome charm and wild sense of humor, Amanda Seyfried is a welcome contradiction and refreshing addition to the landscape of young Hollywood today. Bright and motivated, keep an eye on her upcoming projects because I'm sure Amanda will continue to surprise us all. Stay tuned to Star Picks for all the movies you know and the actors you love. Broadcast in high definition with 5.1 surround sound where available. For more of the best in entertainment news, check out your movie network channels. Find or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube and at mnc.tv.